Hello and welcome. I am the Student Tie Dip and Chew Guy, and this is a for beginners video. Although this may be for most of you, because there's always a lot of questions about this, and in different spots, I've seen it on YouTube, I've seen questions being posed left and right over at Read It. So this is how you go about reconditioning dip. How's a reconditioning dip? Basically, what I'm talking about here is getting dip back into a usable format when you open up a can that you bought and realize that it's dry, and then you check the back and realize that the clerk gave you a can that's three months out of date. So, the biggest part of this is adding moisture back to the product. Now, unlike other tobacco products, pipe tobacco, loose cigarette tobacco, you can't really use terracotta clay stones to re-moisturize this. Those work great if you are trying to get back into shape loose smoking tobacco. But obviously with dip, you're going to need more moisture than they could ever supply. So there's a number of ways to go about doing this. And I'm going to run through a few. My own experience has changed over the years. Uh, I do it differently now. In fact, I do it differently now than probably what I mentioned in some videos six months ago. So I'm going to go through that. So you want to, pop, for me, the moisture level being high is very important. But really, in general, you don't want a dead, dry product. Now, as I've repeatedly said in the past, there are some products that are drier than others. And some of those products, I fully believe, are meant to be that way. I believe that Skull puts out a dry product, even in their blends, so that to cut down on spitting. Skull has a very long history of trying to break into urban smoking markets. And the biggest problem with dip in urban America, the biggest problem people have with it is the spitting aspect. Drier product, less spit. Luckily, I don't care. So, <laughs> moisture product, moisture or product for me. So, I do some of this. I do the hydration part actually in the tub. This is a can of Stoker Straight, which is my everyday, but this is actually what I use as a refill can. I buy a couple regular cans a month. I don't like using the plastic cans that come in the tubs. Just a personal preference. Uh, I'm not a big fan of them. Nice idea, but not for me. So I use regular cans and I use this as a refill. So for me, I do the, more, the, the adding of moisture while it's still in the tub. Okay? But... I realize a lot of people probably buy buy the can or rolls of cans because if you dip Copenhagen or you dip Grizzly, you don't really have, or Skull for that matter, you don't have the tub option. So in the past, get a second because I just filled it. In the past, I have used the old standby. If you look up conversations on different platforms, it's usually mentioned. It's half a soda cap of water. I don't like using tap. It's, it, there's fluoride in it. You know, I, it's a personal preference, I suppose. I use spring water myself. I have a lot of spring water on hand at all times. Not so much that I drink it myself, but Duncan over here has never been given tap water. And Duncan's on his way to year 13 here. So there's always a bunch around. Half a soda cap, you know, like a two liter Pepsi bottle, Coke bottle, whatever. They're the same caps that are on 20 ounces, 
they're all interchangeable. Half of one in the center of the product. All right. Once you get it into the center of the product, you're going to pack, but in between two taps, you're going to turn the can. You're turning the can because you're spreading the water out in all different directions. Okay. Now, a while ago, what I've mentioned before on this channel is that I switched over, and Duncan is to thank again for this, to one of these. It is a one milliliter, no needle syringe. You can get them from vet's offices. That's where this one came from. Obviously, this has not been used for any sort of medication. I was given these. Duncan, being a Jack Russell, has reoccurring ear problems that drops have to go in. So I had a bunch of these. This one was still in its plastic wrap. I take one full milliliter, which is right there. It's broken down into 10 parts. The good part about this is, although I still do the pack and turn deal, it's not as important because you're able to drop drips in in different spots. Drip there, drip there. You could sort of control the spacing of the water. Either way, bottle cap or something along these lines, or what I'm about to show you, once you have it turned around and spun around, packed and whatnot, you want to put it in the fridge overnight. I don't know why. I always sort of thought it was just somebody, you know, going on trying to sound like they knew what they're talking about, but it does seem to make a difference. Not necessary though, if the can you're working on is the only dip you have. I mean, if you have the luxury of having something else and you can sit it in the fridge for overnight or 24 hours, great. If not, it's not it's not absolutely needed, but for whatever reason, and I do not know the science behind it, it does seem to make it better when you use it. So, over the last, I don't know, month or two, what I've actually been doing, now I've been doing it on tubs, but I've been spraying. Now, this is a home and garden sprayer it's usually used by you know gardeners for potted like small indoor potted plants as such it has a pretty it's a stream it's not i i wanted one that sort of did a, a spray but this one is pretty directed so what i do is i move it around pulling the trigger very slowly all right, so I don't know. I don't know if you're going to be able to see this, to tell you the truth, but I'm going to try it anyway. A little bit better when I'm not worried about getting it all over my desk, but you get the idea. So, you know, a spray bottle, basically. Obviously, you don't want a spray bottle that has been holding some sort of chemical all-purpose cleaner or whatever. You, Windex. No, don't use the Windex bottle. But it is handy and you can direct, again, sort of in the same idea as the dropper, but even more spread. And as long as you move it around enough, or if you can get one that is like a fine mist spray, put the container on a table you don't mind getting wet, like a coated countertop or something and spray from a distance then mix with whatever and then spray for a distance the way I just did it I don't really need to mix because the stream is hard enough that it's actually traveling through the tobacco to the bottom if you get what I mean but with a spray you may want to mix it and then spray again like if it's a fine mist spray so i got my plate here wet and i have to dry this off so pant leg i'm sorry we're gonna have to use you to dry this off 
there is one more step you can do here if you wish now i do want to point out that you want to follow this pretty close or you will ruin the dip that you're working on and also that i have only ever done this with stokers straight actually i've never even done it just just stoker straight okay so that's the disclaimer here i have only ever done this with this product don't know what results will be had using a different product all i know is what i have done that said sometimes when you rehydrate add water to the dip put it in the fridge overnight yes it's moist again it seems to juice up a little bit better but there is it, it seems like there's something missing and this is more so the case in product that's well out of date i believe my opinion my theory is that something in the dip is breaking down in the time that it's out of date all right and i think it may have to do with the sodium bicarbonate i say this because i have gotten out of date well out of date cans of copenhagen long cut before and the ones that were very out of date like much out of date usually they were cans i forgot about that i had here seem to be less salty thus my idea that it's something with the sodium bicarbonate that's breaking down the salt content if you will and all sodium bicarbonate is as i have repeatedly said and most people probably know is that that's all it is on the ingredients list or the active ingredients list there is only one thing on the back of this box it is 100 percent sodium bicarbonate so what you want to do and this is where you want to pay attention because i'm not filling up multiple multiple cans to do it exactly the way if you have a new can of dip let's say this is a new can of dip you want to take half of it and put it in a second can okay so the remaining half is flat like that though only the can is only halfway filled up but it is still covering the whole bottom the other half is just staying in the other can for right now you do not repeat do not want to open this and pour it into the can don't do that get a container a tray of some sort in this case i will be using my pipe tobacco dish you want to knock a bit of this out now arm and ham baking soda is cheap as dirt in fact there may be dirt out there that's more expensive than this stuff this which if it stayed good would probably be a lifetime supply of dip reconditioning if you spill too much out on a plate no big deal if you spill it out of the dip you might as well just toss the dip now but you want to knock some out on a plate you don't even have to knock a lot all right it, it's not a lot it, it look at my fingernail next to it there all right you are going to pinch off that plate And finally sprinkle very finely over the top of this and you know what I still have it pinched in my finger this is probably all I'm going to use for a whole can okay that's a whole can half of between my finger and thumb there only half all right the rest of it as I said, this box was probably a dollar fifty, maybe. Uh, you just toss the rest of it in the trash, um, use it to clean a sink, you know, whatever. So this can is filled up, but you would be doing this on the lower 
you've taken half of it out and put it in another can, right? So this can is only down to there. The whole bottom is covered with tobacco. You can't see the bottom of the can. It's just halfway down, all right? You've dumped out on a dish, in a bowl, or whatever, a tiny bit of baking soda. You've pinched an even smaller amount of the baking soda off the plate and rubbing your fingers sprinkled it over the tobacco. You now want to, using a spoon, your finger, whatever, move all the tobacco to one side. So you have like a half moon. It's all over here now. You want to start taking the tobacco, the other half of the can that's in the other can, you want to start taking that and putting it on the empty side and then mixing. Something like this stir stick, this is a British Airways stir stick, is good, all right? Because the product's moist now, so you're going to mess up your hands more than you need to. Stir, dump a little more in. You just basically are trying to get that minuscule amount of baking soda mixed as thoroughly as possible into the whole can. You just keep going like that until the other, the other empty can that had half the tobacco in it is back in this one. It's all in there. The moisture's there. The baking soda's in there. It's as evenly mixed as you could get it. Um, and then it's good. And then at that point, put the lid back on. And if you have the luxury of time, put it in the fridge overnight. What the sodium bicarbonate, the baking soda, is going to do is it's, it's going to make it a little mouthfeely. All right. It's also going to allow you to absorb more of the nicotine in it. Okay. Which may be what what it was missing after you just sprayed water, but got it in, and it just didn't seem to be doing it for you. This will. You do not, do not want to overdo it with the baking soda. Number of reasons. The number one reason is with something that's sweet, if you put too much in, you're going to basically make it salty and sweet. And although that may sound like a good idea, it it doesn't translate into it. it. It isn't. Number two, though, and probably more important in my mind, is that if you put too much in, you are going to get incredibly, incredibly thirsty. Like, ridiculously thirsty. And I know this from experience. You don't want to do that, and you definitely don't want to do it on like a 98-degree day where you're working outside. That is the warning for this. And remember, I've only ever done all this with this product. All right? If you're not sure about the baking soda part, don't do the baking soda part. What you need may just be the water. It, that you, it may be good after that. If it works for you after that, it's whatever works for you. But good rule of thumb in a lot of things, but definitely this, is... Little is better, okay? If you can get a can of dip back to your liking by doing the least possible, you're doing it right, all right? Don't go overboard. Don't, you know, just... If you do too much, the can's effed, all right? Do a little. If it needs more, you can always add more. Do a little more. Do the water... And check it. If it's something still off or you don't feel like, you know, you're getting your neck hit or whatnot, then go to the baking soda. But it may be fine after the water. And that, gentlemen, is that. I have read over the questions on the first part of the Q&A. I will be doing the answers to them probably after the review tomorrow. I have read everybody's questions. I am going to see if any more come in. I do thank you all. I've had six more subscriptions come in, but I didn't get any notifications. So if you want to shout out or want to let me know that you're there, drop in the comments section. 
All right. Now, I am off for the evening. I do hope you all are well. Do take care of yourselves, and God bless.